Welcome to the bonus interview for the East Side Queer Stories podcast. My name is Abe Sabata Jr. and I was the workshop facilitator for the 2019 East Side Queer Stories workshop. I'm excited to be with one of our sublime playwrights from the cohort and I will let them introduce themselves. Hi everyone, I'm Hadrian Sean Miguel. He, him, they pronouns and my play is called Meet Me at the Bodega. So the first question I ask everyone is, what kind of writing had you done before attending the ESQS workshop? Okay, um, I've always been a writer since I was a kid as a sort of coping me mechanism for my angst. And I always kept a journal to write my feelings. Um, so in high school and college, I was drawn to poetry and English lit. That's primarily all the writing that I've done. Nice, yeah. So I think many a writer has been a uh, influenced by the humanities departments at whatever <laughs> schools they went to. <laughs> that and the arts. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Arts and humanities, that's always been my favorite sections. <laughs> um, can you actually tell us a little bit about your upbringing? Yeah, sure. I was born and raised in San Francisco and I've lived in Seattle, New York, Miami, and now LA, what I like to call the four great corners of America. Um, I come from a multicultural background and a large family that is Afro Latino, Asian, and Anglo. How did your upbringing? So you you have kind of like multi uh, national there. Uh, what was that? Well, what did you say? Four corners of the <laughs> the the four great corners of America. <laughs> the four great corners of America. So how, how did all of that influence um, Meet Me at the Bodega? <laughs> all of it. <laughs> um, it's based mostly on what I like to call my hot and balmy days and summers as a child and also as an adult in New York, Louisiana, and Florida. It's also a true and hyper fictionalized tale of myself, my grandmother, sisters, aunts, brothers, and cousins. Nice. So that's kind of like a nice segue there. So where did the characters from the play come from, especially Felix, the, the cat? <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of my favorite characters. Um, when we were workshopping the piece at East Side Queer Stories, I was thinking about all the bodegas and the one outstanding thing about them. And that was there was always cat in many of the stores as a sort of uh, familiar kind of comfortable thing that people can relate to. But also, it was mostly as used as a rodent abatement. So my thought was, how can I sensationalize this and make it, and make it then and make it now? So Felix is a member of our family. He's Manny's brother in this story, the one creature that could truly be over the top, fantastical, and queer. I am Felix the Great, and the category is Banshee Butch Kitty First Time in Drag at a Supermarket Ball. I am the feline defender of our America Beauty, the lean mean hunter. I rule these floors and countertops with ten, 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 tens across the board. So the characters are multi-generational, and what, in, what inspired you to try to tell a story from those different points of view? I don't know. I feel like it's it's in every story, mostly in every family. Um, that's the common denominator, especially coming from a Latin background, from an Asian background where we kind of it's multi generational. There usually is a grandmother or grandfather in the house um, that your mom and dad is taking care of. Um, so it was important to me to reflect that and to show that. In, in my story, but also at the workshop, um, it's multi-generational too. And coming in there, I didn't feel like I was the oldest, but you know, I'm definitely was in the higher end of, 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 of that. Um, but you know, it's a reflection of that too. And I think there's something for everyone, no matter what your age is. Yeah, and I enjoy that the piece is a queer story, but it's also, open trick for all kinds of families, especially when you're coming from a family that is multi-generational, who, you know, takes care of one another. And so I think there's always this assumption about what queer storytelling is. And I think this piece bridges that very nicely. Yeah, it it's it's definitely 
a representation of that, but it's also, you know, not everything has to be like at a gay club, you know, at a bar, you know, so I can represent queer culture um, in its many facets without having to be so literal, like over the top at a pride parade or at a gay bar. That's what is always fun about this Eastside Queer Stories is that they're not the typical stereotypes of what we normally find in queer stories. Right, and especially with mainstream uh, queer, you know, representation, um, mainstream typically deals with like the relationship of the, the, you know, the queer partners or, you know, gay life in that sense of, you know, relating to going to parties and, and you know, going to pride parades and, and that sort of thing. And I definitely, you know, they can tell that story. I have a different story to tell. Yeah, and I love that. I love that it's about family and there, you know, the, the plot is interesting. You know, there's like kind of like, not like a super clear plot. Was that, as you were writing it, was that hard to sometimes for yourself to follow? Yeah, especially, you know, when you have the guidelines of what a play really is and you're coming in in from like a poetry aspect of it, um, just for the listening audience, the play started out as a as a poem and I wanted to turn that into a play. So taking the poem and trying to come up with, you know, some of the plots and some of, you know, the resolution and all that, it was definitely challenging, um, but that was the best part of it because I wanted to take the poem and see if I could actually turn it into a play and hopefully soon a, a film. Yeah, and so, you know, with In the Heights on its way, do you yeah. see uh, Bodega becoming a longer piece or a short film, as you just kind of mentioned? What do you, what do you Yes, think? absolutely. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Uh, there's more to the story. I would love to make it a full length play or even better as a film to live on beyond me. It would be wonderful to flesh out all the characters and, and, and introduce other characters like some of the gang members that I envisioned in, in this play, um, especially the gangs that were in New York back in the day. And a quick shout out to, uh, and so as of this moment, I have not heard the play yet, <laughs> <laughs> but I am excited to listen to it. Um, I, I think that before this even, be, before we even got into any editing or anything, Joseph, who was the director, uh, we were all very cognizant of kind of knowing that this one was gonna take a little bit more preparation. Uh -huh. um, and it's cause it's a little bit more musical and so I'm excited to listen to it. So, I, uh, yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm really excited. Um, Joseph had a lot of excellent ideas about the musicality and the lyricism of, of, of the language. And so I'm really excited to hear how it all, um, how it all came into fruition and what the ending result is. Same. Yeah. It's going to be, I think it's gonna be a really fun one. And uh, you're, you're, uh, Daniel, Madi, Mal, and Stacy were all great, and I, I got to be in there as they did it, uh, and so uh, you know, with my mask on and everything, and, <laughs> and it was fun. There was a lot of it felt like a lot of energy um, through the words that was coming out, so that was always a good sign. Yeah, yeah, they, they're that's a great cast. I sat in on one of the uh, uh, one of the rehearsals, and they were absolutely fantastic. Aki. Nuestros corazones reside. Here our hearts lie. Love in abundance, our family resides. Our little shops are our lifeblood of the Empire State. So meet me at the bodega, day after day. After day. Till next time we say, buenas noches. And goodbye. What would you want the listeners to take away from the play? Ooh, let's see. Um, I think for me, based on what's happening in the in the world right now especially with the pandemic i would like everyone to gain from this is to live your life to live your truth to be that fierce and fabulous person that's in all of us because life is short and for me i lost a lot of friends in new york and california from the pandemic and 
it's just, it's just, I don't know. I can't even describe it. It's, it's, it's a great loss and it happened so fast within a year. And it just made me realize that you just have to be, be who you are and what you want to be and just live your life because, you know, as they say, tomorrow is not promised. So that's what I would like everyone to get from the play. Just be fabulous, be fierce, be fantastic, be queer if you want to be. <laughs> I love that. Yes. And I, um, and I hope that everybody is energized after they listen to it and um, is able to spend some time on spend, spend some time at on the stoop. Oh my god, what am I saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> spend some time on the stoop outside listening to it. Yes. <laughs> um, what did you gain or learn from being a part of the ESQS workshop? Oh my god, wow! That it's for me. The fact that Eastside Queer Stories and Q Youth Foundation provided a queer and safe space for us to write. That was really important to me because I had been in many writing spaces that weren't inclusive and diverse. Um, and I didn't feel represented in those groups. Um, and the community programs that Eastside Queer Story and, and, and especially Q Youth Foundation that they provide um, for writing and the arts are exceptional. And that's what's needed for all of us. It, it really came into my life when I needed to push and write again and at a time when I wanted community and some of the writers have become real friends so that was like the icing on the cake for me. Yeah it's been so great to listen to you all talk about the workshop and I think also what what we tried to do is always have the writers in mind and the workshop is y'all's it's not mine it's not something for like my ego or anything like that uh and so it's it's also just kind of fun i think and the having different voices and the diversity um we actually have diversity <laughs> yeah i know i love that about um east side queer stories it i i came in there not having a whole lot of expectations because i wanted to be surprised I wanted to hear the different people. I wanted to see, you know, everybody together um, representing queer culture. And, you know, that's definitely the case. I mean, it is very multi-generational. I loved hearing the people just like coming out of high school, you know, that's really refreshing because I'm not around that a lot. And, you know, I'm not a teacher. Um, and so that was great. And, and hearing everyone's stories, they're all so different. And that was very exciting. It's always awesome that there is that multi-generation just because we all learn from one another. Mm -hmm. And, Ex and what's, what's even better is everybody was very respectful during critiques. Uh, yeah, critiques. yeah. And it, it's, it's a learning experience for everyone. Um, everyone gains something, you know, if you just, if you just are patient and willing to listen, you know, there's a lot to be learned. Hi, I'm Ana Bernal, Executive Director and Founder of Key Youth Foundation. I wanted to give a special thanks to our listeners worldwide. And if you have enjoyed our ESQS series, please consider making a donation to Key Youth. We are a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to building creative and brave spaces for the LGBTQIA plus community. Check out our website at www.qyouthfoundation.org to learn more about us and donate to support our programming. Thank you. Are you working on any other projects at the moment? Actually, I have a couple of things, uh, a couple of things that are happening right now. Uh, I directed and costume designed a play called I Am A Star for Chicanos, Cholas y Chisme. Um, that production is still playing online till June 1st at casa0101.org. And I'm directing the same play for Frida Kahlo Theater. I did that back in February and March and that was too online because of the pandemic but they're going live in July. And so it'll be nice to be back in a theater space. So I'll be directing the play for Frida Kahlo Theater. Um, and other than that, I've just been writing. Um, I'm in the middle of writing two plays. 
One of them is about a not out gay actor, Wade Dominguez, who passed away at the height of his career. Mm. And also a play called The Soldies about low rider and oldies Latinx culture here in California. When you directed the I Am A Star for Frida Kahlo and Casa Sera Uno Uno, um, you did them and you directed it in person, correct? And how was that experience? Yeah, so most of the rehearsals were done um, via Zoom, um, but we actually got to go into both the theater spaces um, under intense safety precautions. <laughs> um, we all had to be tested, that sort of thing. Um, but it was, it was great in the sense that I actually could rehearse it on the actual stage. Um, so that was exciting. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen it or don't know about it, I Am A Star is about uh, Sylvia Rivera, the queer and trans uh, activist um, that lived in New York. So Hadrian, where can people follow you? Okay, on Instagram, I'm there as Hadrianistic and also as American Echo, and on Twitter as The Hadrian. Awesome, yes, and uh, definitely check out uh, American, I wanna say American Echo. I wanna say American, <laughs> American I know. <laughs> one in uh, English, one in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I bought a cat tie-dye shirt and I constantly get uh, compliments on that whenever I wear it out, so. Uh, <laughs> Thank you recommend. for the support. <laughs> And so uh, awesome. Thank you so much, Adrian, for being here. I can't wait for everybody to hear. Meet me at the bodega. Hopefully they'll be tapping their foot as they listen. Yes. And lots of re-listen so they can really kind of hear the poetry. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us for Eastside Queer Stories and make sure to follow Hadrian at, what was your Instagram one more time? Hadrianistic at, on Instagram and also as American Echo and on Twitter as The Hadrian. And make sure to subscribe and share on all social media platforms uh, so we can just go ahead and say goodbye to the lovely people. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. Thank you. Follow, donate on PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.